quickly from beat to beat. So here we are, the last measure of our Chopin prelude. And let's go ahead and write out our notes from the bottom up, from the bass to the top. Here's the D. We have a D in beat one. Okay, we have our key signature, which I'm writing out again. You do not need to if you're working with the same and the same line. B flat, E flat, A, A flat. Okay, so we have measure for D and then A natural. This is an accidental. D, F sharp. There is something shifting here, you can tell, because there's naturals and sharps. Something is happening. We are moving to a new key. That's your first clue. Then we have a C and a D. We're not going to worry about it yet. We're just going to, I'm going to make this a little much clearer. So if you make a mistake like that, just fix your stuff if you need to. We have a C and a D at the same time, which means you just write them one on one side, one on the other side of the, of the bar. The next beat, octave G's. After that, we have G, B natural. Okay. And this is actually going to be beamed left hand. And this will be beamed right hand. So your right hand plays lots of notes in Chopin. Your right hand is very busy. D, G. Okay. I'm actually going to start writing this measure over again because that looks very not so clear. So here it is. D, A natural. Writing it again, D, F sharp for left hands, reaching up into the C and the D. There we go. That's so much clearer. There's beat one. Beat two, G. We also have an octave G below that. These are beamed together. On top, we have G, B natural, D, G. Okay. There we go. Beat three. Octave Ds. So we're going to use a lot of ledger lines for beat three. We have one, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Octave Ds. Played with the left hand. Right hand, we are beginning with a C, then a D, then F sharp, and then a B natural. Dotted sixteenth note to A natural. So this is very time consuming. If you're used to using um, software that makes your notes for you, it's probably good for you to take a break from that and once in a while really work like the old composers worked and write it out for yourself. You get used to the way it feels. Okay, this measure is our last measure we're doing with Chopin. Let's figure our notes out. We have a D. We also have an A natural, which is an accidental. We have a D, F sharp. Okay, this is definitely telling me that this is either, uh, we're in the key of C minor, right? So this is a D major chord. Within the key of C minor, it's really rare that you're going to have a major two. So we need to figure out what this really is. This is not a major two. This is a D. So if we know, if we're familiar with our key signatures and what tendencies are, let's go to the fifth of C, which is the key of G. The fifth of G is D. When If you have something like this, you have to know that it's a five, seven, and five. So in the key of G, G, A, B, C, D, this is the five chord. So this is a five, seven, and five. The second beat we have a G. And uh, we have a B natural. And we have a D. We have a G chord. So the other way you know, so G5 of C minor. The other way you know that this is going to be 5, 7, and 5 to 5 is, is because it's, you know, um, D. It won't be major 2 to 5 in a minor key. It just won't. It'll be 5, 7, and 5 to 5. That's a really really big clue that you are moving towards the tonal center of five. So again, D, we have D, we have C, F sharp, A. This is all a clue, just like the first beat, that this is a five, seven, a five. Let's see, what is beat for? G, B natural, D, G. This is a 
five. Okay, so this is an amazing piece of music, and it's great to sort of, if you can't play through it all the way, to just sort of play the chords out or listen to the recording. Um, I am, I urge you to continue to copy famous pieces that you're intrigued by or that you want to unlock the tonal key to. Like the Chopin, it's very time consuming and you end up with a lot of writing and a lot of scribbling and a lot of deduction. And that's what this is. When you're finding keys, when you're analyzing tonal centers and analyzing harmony, you are basically finding clues as to which key the composer is leading our ears toward. Thank you for watching this installment and stay tuned to educator.com.